it's uh, day 50 of our daily devotion and prayer. Today is uh, May 22nd. This is the fifth day of our 10th week of Enhanced Community Quarantine. My devotion uh, this morning was uh, Psalms 140 to 142. But we will focus on Psalm 142. So if you have your Bibles with you, it will be good if you can open it before you as we have our reflection on this, uh, on this psalm. Psalm 142 was a uh, prayer, was a prayer of David. Uh, most probably he wrote this when he was uh, in a cave, when he was uh, running away from Saul. King Saul wanted David killed, for David was a threat to his uh, kingship. So as David and his men hid in the cave, uh, Saul went in the same cave to relieve himself. So when, uh, when the men of David uh, saw that uh, Saul entered the cave, they prodded David that it was his chance to take the life of Saul. But instead of being impulsive, David only cut off the corner of the robe of Saul because he cannot in conscience put out his hand against the Lord's anointed. David's men really wanted to attack Saul, but David ordered them not to touch Saul because Saul was the Lord's anointed. So after Saul rose up, he left the cave and went on his way safely. It was a, a great opportunity for David to get rid of Saul, the king that he served faithfully, wanted him dead, and Saul caused him a distress, worry, anxiety, and fear. Human impulse uh, dictates that that was an opportunity for David to take advantage of the situation and to get rid of Saul. But David knew that no one should touch the Lord's anointed, and his conviction was so strong that even to his own uh, detriment, even to his own disadvantage, he let the one who caused distress in his life to live. This is a, a good reminder for you and for me that when we are in distress, do not be impulsive. Because when we react to situations rather than responding according to God's will, according to God's way, and according to God's timing, most likely we will end up with more trouble in our life. With whatever is going on in your life right now, I exhort you not to take matters into your own hands. Do not go ahead of God. In trying to solve problems, you know, to overcome your challenges, as you face trials in this pandemic, it is good for you to be reminded not to be impulsive. You need to respond according to God's will, according to God's way and in God's timing. In this, uh, the background of this psalm, Psalm 142, clearly David did not take matters into his own hands. It was a very difficult situation and yet he chose to put his trust in God who will deliver him from his affliction in God's way and in God's timing. So what did David did instead? When he was in distress, when he was put in this dilemma, he cried out to God. In Psalm 142, if you read through this uh, uh, seven verses, you will notice, or you might want to mark it down, uh, the word cry, he used it uh, three times. In verse 1, in verse 5, and then in verse 6. You may also want to mark that, uh, that word uh, plead in verse 1, that phrase, pour out, in verse 2, and tell, in verse 2. What does this tell us? This tells us that David, when he was in distress, he voiced it out to God. He cried out to God. He poured out his heart to God verbally. And that is a way for him to express his dependence on God. So as I was reflecting on this, on this passage uh, earlier this morning, I learned that there are three assurances that God gives us when we cry out to God. The first one is this. When we are in distress and we cry out to God, 
you need to keep in mind that God listens to you. When you cry out, God listens. Therefore, feel free to express your heart to Him. Look at verse 1 and 2 of Psalm 142. David said, With my voice I cry out to the Lord. With my voice I plead for mercy to the Lord. I pour out my complaint before Him. I tell my trouble before Him. David cried out in desperation to God. He pleaded for God's mercy. He poured out his complaint and he told God all his trouble. And he uttered this prayer of desperation, voicing it out to God. I'm not sure with you, but if we experience, uh, if, we, if we are in distress, there's so much things going on in our hearts and in our minds, and then you're able to express it to someone, it helps, right? When you are bothered with something and you were able to express it to, to someone, even to your loved ones, it is good to have a sounding board, a sounding board. And it's good, it's a good feeling that someone is listening to us, especially in this crisis, in this pandemic. Do not uh, go through this alone. You need to process your thoughts, your feelings with others because it will be healthy for you. But with God, God is more than a sounding board. Because when we voice out our concerns to God, you will experience a sense of relief knowing that God hears you. And the mere fact that God assures us that He hears us when we cry out to Him, we are assured that He cares for us. And somehow it will give us peace in our hearts. It, it will give us confidence that we are not alone in this journey. God is, is concerned about you. That is what, uh, what the psalmist, uh, what David uh, expressed in uh, verse 3 to 5. He said, when my spirit faints within me, you know my, my way. When my spirit faints within me, you know my way. It means that when David was so down, when he was so discouraged, when, we, when he no longer has that energy and that spirit to carry on, he was sure that God knows exactly what he's going through. So my exhortation for you is this. If you still have some worry, fear, and anxiety in your, in your life right now, I want you to remember what Jesus Christ said in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. Come to me, all of you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Tell God all your problems, all your pains, and He will give you restedness. You tell Him all your disappointments, and He will surely direct your steps. Tell Him your concerns, and He will give you comfort. And that brings us to the second point. When we, when we cry out to God, God will listen to us, but we, we will also be assured that God cares for us. So you, you can take refuge in Him. Look at verse 4. In verse 4 of Psalm 142, this is what He said. Look to the right and see, there is none who takes notice of me. No refuge remains to me. No one cares for my soul. But in verse 5, He said, I cry to you, O Lord, I say you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. When David was at a loss on what to do and where to go, he looked up to God. And when he remembered who God is, he knows that God cares for him and he can take refuge in God. And that is what he did. Out of desperation, when he was in distress, he cried out to God and he ran to God as his refuge. Most likely when he wrote this, he was physically drained. He was emotionally tired because of the running away from Saul. And his spirit you know, faints within him. And he needs to avoid, avoid all the ambushes that the man of Saul is putting before him. And even though he was the leader of a small band of army, he felt all alone and he felt that no one cares for him. And yet when he was in a time of desperation, the Spirit convicted him to look up to God, who never failed to care for him, especially during those moments that he was in distress. And he declared two things about God. And I want you to keep this in mind. The first thing that he declared is this, You are my refuge. God is my refuge. When David uttered those words, he affirmed himself that in God's presence, he will be safe. He will find comfort and He will find peace. And I want you 
to think about that as well and to declare that God is my refuge. And when you declare that God is my refuge, may the Lord affirm you of His abiding presence and that in His presence you will be safe. Aside from declaring that God is my refuge, He said, God is my portion. In verse 5, He said, I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. When He said, my portion, He reminded Himself that God is His allotment or inheritance in life. It means that David knew that God is all that he needs in life. When he was in distress, when he was in a point of desperation, he reminded himself that God is my refuge. In his presence, I will find comfort, I will be safe. He also declared that God is my portion. He reminded himself that God is all that he needs. And I want you to keep those, those two things in mind about who God is. God is my refuge God is my portion and when you are you know in a very difficult situation you do not know what to do you do not know the way that you need to go verbalize it tell God God you are my refuge in your presence I will be safe God you are my portion you are all that I need in life so when you are in distress now, when you are in distress, do not be impulsive. Feel free to cry out to God. And when you cry out to God, remember that God listens and that God cares. And third, God delivers. Therefore, you can put your hope in Him. Look at verse 6. In verse 6 of Psalm 142, He said, Attend to my cry, for I am brought very low. Again, he cried out himself. He cried himself to God, Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. The righteous will surround me, for you will deal bountifully with me. Again, in these last two verses, David once again pleaded with God, God, please pay attention to me. Please deliver me. Bring me out of this predicament. But this time around, this time around, he ended with thanksgiving and confidence that God will see him through and therefore David put his hope in God. He was still in a very difficult situation and, then, and yet he thanked God in advance. He felt locked down in the cave. He was brought very low. It means he was desperate. He was, he was weak. He said he is loose. it means he is losing his strength and his spirit to carry on with life. And he cannot just go out uh, carelessly for fear of his life. He has to wait it out and he waited for God's way and God's timing when the time is right for him to go out. But even though when he was still in this predicament, he expressed hope that God will deliver him. So in advance, he thanked God. For he knew that God will eventually see him through. And when he said, the righteous will surround me, in verse 7, the righteous will surround me, it was a picture of celebration or triumph. It was a picture of people putting a wreath or a crown of garlands around his head. He was looking forward to the future, to that moment when he was already delivered by God. And he was standing before the people declaring and thanking God for his deliverance. David also expressed confidence that eventually God will deal with him bountifully. In verse 7, the last part, for you will deal bountifully with me. It means David was confident that God will treat him generously with his abundant goodness. In the same way, that is my prayer for you. When you are feeling alone right now in life, when you do not see the light at the end of the tunnel, when you feel that all that you have worked for the past years are gone, when you do not know how or whether you will regain them back, when you feel inadequate, remember that God is your refuge, that God is your portion, and He will deliver you. As He delivered you in the past, He will surely deliver you in the present. So when you feel anxious about tomorrow, I want you to look back in your life 
Remember the lowest point in your life in the past and how God brought you where you are before the pandemic. And you will be reminded that as long as you see the morning and as long as you have God in your life, you can have hope for tomorrow. That tomorrow, life will be better, not because of who you are, what you have, and what you can do, but because God is your refuge and God is your portion. So I encourage you today, no matter how bleak the future is for you, thank God in advance, for He will surely deliver you today. And give thanks in advance for the abundant goodness that He has prepared for you tomorrow. After Saul left and were far off from the cave, David went out of the cave. He called on Saul and gave respect to Saul as the anointed one. And David told Saul that his men wanted him to kill Saul, but David spared his life for he was the Lord's anointed. When David was in distress, he was not impulsive. And when Saul realized this, Saul wept and confessed that David was more righteous than him. In 1 Samuel 24, 19-20, this is what Saul said to David. For if a man finds his enemy, will he let him go away safe? That is exactly what David did for Saul. And then Saul continued, So may the Lord reward you with good for what you have done to me this day. And now behold, I know that you shall surely be king and that the kingdom of Israel shall be established in your hand. Now even the enemy of David, the one who wanted him dead, had wished him good. Because David was not impulsive when he was in distress. So my encouragement for you today, remember those two things about who God is. God is your refuge. It means that in His presence, you will be safe. And remember that God is your portion. It means that God is all that you need in life. But having said that, you need to pray hard. You need to ask discernment from God on the way that He wants you to go and the things that He wants you to do. Pray hard, but you also need to plan well. You need to give your best with what you have, wherever you are. Give everything that you've got, and then trust God will take care of the things beyond your control. May the goodness of the Lord follow you all the days of your life as you keep in mind that He is your refuge and He is your portion. When you are in distress, do not be impulsive. Do not go ahead of God. Follow His will, His way, and His perfect timing. And when you feel alone, turn to God. Remember, God will always be there, ready to listen to you, so you are free to express your heart to Him. Remember that God cares for you, and you can take refuge in Him. And remember that God, your refuge, and your portion will deliver you. Therefore, put your hope in Him. That will be my prayer for you. As we continue our time of prayer, I want you to praise God that God sustained us for the past 50 days. And my prayer is that uh, somehow you have developed that habit of fighting for your time with God and His Word. And I pray that every time that you will open the Word of God, God will reveal Himself to you. And in Him, you will find comfort in His Word. 